So hello everybody and welcome to a new Crabble video. In today's video we're going to talk about what normalizing data is, how to use it, when to use it, why you're using it, the works. Okay, so to do that we're going to use the um, Corona data set. Great, great, great case for that. So let's take this as a learning opportunity if nothing else. And uh, I have made some changes on the data set because they've changed the source and I need to change the name of some of the country so we can get population. I'll let you know. So if you want the file, if you want to practice, link down below, Corval Download Center and then Community Downloads, and this is going to be number 57. Okay, so go and get it. Um, with that said, let's get started with the video, shall we? Okay, so normalizing data. We did on Monday's video, I'll show you how to create a measure or a calculated column in this case for new cases. Now, I've changed slightly the calculation since Monday, thanks to a comment um, written by one of you. So make sure you change that too. Again, if you get this file, you get the change also. So we have new cases. If we try to plot this into Power BI, you'll see I have here date, new cases, and then country region. And you'll see that the United States is the country at the moment that has the latest, the, the, the greatest number of new cases. And this is since the 24th, so yesterday basically, of March. If we copy this and we try to put it in a graph, you'll see here. Um, let's change it to a line chart. And one of the things that really stumped me is, as you can see, the lines that appear, Austria is the first one. And if you see the legends, I knew that the legends were limited. I didn't realize that they limited also the data points. But you see here, it goes by alphabetical order, and the US is nowhere to be found, which is our biggest um, country. So it should definitely be there. But how do we visualize these in a better way. Obviously using these, it won't work. Here's the thing. I think one way to visualize this data is actually a good way to do it is to use a heat map. So if we do this and put it as a matrix where we have country regions, rows and dates and columns, here we, we would have, and then you know, with conditional formatting, you, you format with colors. This would be a good way to visualize this data, but formatting all these columns is going to be a mess in Power BI. So I decided that mm, this is probably not a good way. We will talk about normalizing in just a second. I just want to make the point why you need to normalize it, and this is a good exercise. So I actually went to Charticulator. Charticulator is a free tool created by Microsoft where you can make graphs and then just use it in your web pages or create a custom visual for Power BI. And I actually plotted the heat map in there. As you see, it's a lot easier to create and it's just you can modify it better, you have more parameters. I'm going to show you how to create this graph on today's video in Kerbal Data Labs, my second channel. So I will post the link down below. You can go there and check it out, okay? So as we can see here, this is a better way to visualize the data. Now it's, we have here the US, and then we can see the US is the one that has the, the highest number of new cases. This is by date. And then we have Italy, Spain, Germany. And if, for example, if you look at the small countries like Sweden and Norway, you think that you may think that pff, there's nothing going on there, there's nothing to worry about. But that's not true, because this is showing us the number, the total number of cases, no matter how many people live in that specific country. And obviously that is important if our cap is on healthcare. So we need to know what is the capacity. Obviously the capacity for smaller countries is going to be smaller. So if we want to track if healthcare hospitals are going to have a problem, then we need to do this by population. So. A great way to manage this type of cases is to actually say, okay, how many infected people do I have by a million people? 
So what you basically do is you create a new scale and you do it by 1 million cases, by 1 million people. So to normalize the data, we need to actually go back to Power BI. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to get population in the GitHub. There is no population in there. So we need to put in the population in order to do that calculation. So how many infected cases do we have per 1 million persons? person or people living in the country. So I found actually a great source here and we're going to use that and put that information into Power BI. The great thing about this is that it has also a continent, something that I wanted to have in this data set. So we're going to go to new source web and we're going to paste the link. And you know, the web connector for Power BI is just wonderful. It works so, 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 so well. So anonymous. And now we are going to get a list of uh, countries, country codes, population. It Unfortunately, it doesn't say here, when was this updated last? Which is, I find it quite interesting to say the least. But I check some of the countries and it looks like it is fairly up to date anyhow. So if you have a better source, please use that. So here it is going through the website and here we should have a, you see, it founded the list, the table on the HTML code and grab it. So this is fantastic. We just get it in raw format basically. So now it's getting imported into Power BI. Let's put it here onto other queries because we are not going to load these. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to location and we're going to merge these two tables. And we're going to merge them by uh, country codes. So we have the country name, country name, and this is why I changed some of the country names so we actually get a merge. I think we are missing like four or five small countries. Uh, but other, otherwise, it just works very, very well. And click OK. And then we go, not there, sorry. We go here and then we pick population and continent. And now we have population and continent. And we just close and apply. And now we have our... Um, population uh, data, which is going to be very, very useful. So let's let it load. It will be very, very fast, actually. First, I want to transform this back into a table so we can actually see. We go to location and there we have the population. And the calculation for normalizing the data by population is as follows. So we go here and it will show up in a minute. We're going to call it new cases, sorry, new cases, one million. Or how about one million people? So it's like super clear what this thing is doing. Um, and now this is how you do it. So you're going to divide the total cases Total, total cases by the population. You should create actually a measure for population so you're not using the raw data. I'm just a bit lazy today. And then you're going to multiply that by a million. And that is going to give you how many cases you have per million in that population, in that place. Uh, so once you have it in there, you put it up here and then we want to do these for type confirmed cases. So here we have it. Um, so the total number of new confirmed cases is 10,000. This is the population of the United States. So it is 141 new cases by 23rd and then 173 three by the 24. So this data now is going to give us an 
different picture of what we had before. So now that we have these new cases per 1 million people, so this is 143 new cases per 1 million people in the US. So if we go back to chart calculator, here we have the previous chart where we do it by number of cases, total number of cases. Now I have changed that, so it is number of cases by 1 million, you can see there. Now you can start seeing that the small countries like Sweden and Norway, things are happening in there because it's normalized to the size of their country. Okay, so that basically helps visualize and normalize the scale, the same as we did with the financial time scale where we put where everything starts at 100 cases. This is very, very similar. So hopefully this is useful. If you want to know how to create this into Charticulator, go to the Kerbal Data Labs and I'll show you how to do it there. So another thing that I want to show you, if you see here that there are some blanks, it means that there is no data. On Friday, I'll show you how to populate that so we get a field chart. Okay, I'll see you again on Friday. Until then, take care and bye bye.